the ground. So, can I see more without any external agent? Will it move? No. So, unless an external agent acts on it, it won't move.
so dp by dt newton's third law states that for every reaction there will be equal and opposite reaction so suppose if there are two bodies a and b if there are two bodies a and b suppose if i apply a force on this then what will happen this whole system will try to move like this but if you look at the boundary between a and b if you look at the boundary between a and b are if you apply some force this will try to pull this it will try to push this towards the side but what we will try b surface will try to push this back so here between the boundaries the contact forces will be same because whatever reaction you are applying the same reaction will be acting in opposite direction so this is f ab this is f ba both are numerically equal f ab is equal to f ba f ab we are writing only because a on b b a is b on a they are numerically equal but if you write in vectors f bar ab is equal to minus f bar ba because both are in reverse directions their magnitudes are equal but their directions are different this is acting in this direction but this is acting from b to a inertial frame and non inertial frame suppose if a car is accelerating with an acceleration a r it is moving with a velocity v if you want to apply newton's law of motion here you can apply newton's law of motion even for the car and the person who is it because here newton's law of valid you can directly apply and you can find the answers suppose a a bus is a So, if the bus is 
in isolating with an isolation A, apply isolation in the reverse direction. For all objects, give isolation in the reverse direction. For a person, he is isolating with an isolation A and moving with a velocity U. Now you can apply with respect to the ground, Newton's laws of motion. Here we can apply because this is at rest. This is at rest. So inertial frame is one where Newton's laws are valid. Non-inertial frame is where Newton's laws are not valid. So if you look at the motion of the position with respect to the ground directly here, Newton's laws are not valid. So this is non-inertial frame. Because the frame is accelerating with some acceleration. Here the frame is kept constant, kept at rest. Because we are giving a negative acceleration, so it is at rest and we can apply Newton's laws of motion. So here we are converting non-inertial frame to an inertial frame by the application of pseudo force. So pseudo force is a force which we require to keep the body at rest so that we can use Newton's laws of motion. Suppose if a truck is moving with an isolation A and a pendulum is suspended in it and it is tied to the upper end. So if you want to see the motion of the pendulum then the pendulum will move backwards as the bus is moving it will be moving backwards so if you want to look at if you want to apply Newton's laws of motion for this pendulum what we have to do first we have to keep this body at rest so here negative acceleration acceleration in reverse direction to all the bodies now you can clearly understand this because here if you see the orb is moving backwards. So this will be at rest and for this orb you can apply. So MG will be acting downwards and MA is acting like this. So if theta is the angle with the vertical, this is also theta tan theta is equal to ma by md so a equal to g tan theta is a acceleration with which it suppose there are two bodies and we are applying force on any one of the bodies suppose we are applying force on a so if you apply force on A, well, the system will move towards right, right side directly. Will it move directly towards right side? No. Because we have to see how the surface is. Because the surface of contact will also come into picture here. How can we relate this to real life? Yes. So, if you drag a trolley bag on the platform in a railway station or if you drag the same trolley bag on a concrete road, will you feel any difference? The sound will have, will hear, will be different because it is due to obviously the contact surfaces the difference in contact surfaces. Here you are having smooth wheels and you are having a smooth surface, relatively smooth surface. But on concrete road you will have some difference between the two surfaces. That's why you will hear more sound compared to the sound which will come here. It will be easy to drag here. It will be a little you have to apply more force to drag the back here. If you apply force on these two blocks, so the blocks might not move initially. 
they might know, they might not know, but if you apply a force which can move both, both the blocks, if only if you know what is the force which is offered by this contact surface. So now we will come across a concept where friction comes into picture. Friction comes into picture between the two surfaces. Between two overlapping surfaces or two surfaces in contact. If the surface is smooth, then generally we say mu will be zero. If mu is if mu is non-zero, then we'll say rough surface. So here friction will be present. Here friction will be applied. On applying force, these two blocks will move together. So if you want to find acceleration of the system as equal to ma plus mb into a, as equal to ma plus mb into a. So a is equal to f by ma plus mb. So if you want to measure contact force between a and b, contact force between a and b, you have to take the blocks a and b separately. A force F is applied on this and there is a contact force F B A on this and it is moving towards right with an acceleration A. This is also moving with an acceleration A and we are applying a force F A B on this. F A B and F B are same. So if you write equation F minus F B A is equal to M a into A and if you write F A B is equal to M B into A if you simplify this first equation F B A is equal to F minus M A into A F minus M A into A isolation will be F by M A plus M B Simplify this, it will be mb into f by ma plus 